the magnificently named sputter deposition machine is being used by Dr. Rob Somek to fire individual yttrium and barium atoms at a tiny piece of sapphire inside to build up a superconductor atomic layer by atomic layer. So sputter deposition can be used to deposit a full range of device materials as well as superconductors. Simple metals, oxides, nitrides, carbides, magnetic materials, ferroelectrics. None of the systems are dedicated to particular film deposition. Again, this is a research scale set up so we can be very flexible so that we can change the deposition parameters and learn about optimization of film growth. It's a much more complex system depositing the oxide superconductors. Here we have a heated substrate which can be rotated to lie directly beneath and very close to, in this case, a circular sputtering target. This is a planetary rotation system to perform uniform deposition onto larger substrate areas. So the substrate be sitting on this block here, which rotates continuously as it passes in front of the magnetron target here. We're using optical spectroscopy to analyze the plasma during film growth. From this, we can analyze what ionization state the species are in. And here, with the different colors, we can see different species. For example, barium ion is the red line. The blue line represents argon ion, and the yellow is atomic oxygen. So we need to be very careful not to have high energy species during the deposition of these oxides because this bombards the film during growth, you get re-sputtering and produce the wrong film composition. This is our system for surface analysis of thin films. We can grow thin films of superconductors and other materials in this deposition chamber by sputtering and then by a system of valves and manipulators we can just translate this uh, sample we have just grown without touching the outer atmosphere so there's no contamination into the analysis chamber where different kind of measurements can be done. We can do electron diffraction on the surface to check crystallinity. We can uh, look at the surface also by scanning electron microscope. We can do STM, so um, uh, scanning tunneling microscopy, uh, X-ray photoelectron uh, spectroscopy. Uh, you see all these different uh, panels coming out of the, of the chamber for the different techniques. However, these big boxes up here are to keep up the vacuum of 10 to the minus 10 millibar. They are ionic pumps and they also don't introduce mu much vibrations into the STM measurements. We've chosen, besides sputtering, also to do those laser position. And was, well, astonished how easy it is to get a film of IBCO with a good TC and relatively, well, good quality. But it's a kind of quick and dirty method, so it's a thick film and it has a good well, properties, etc. But the, our aim was to make devices and very controlled, say, Joseon junctions. And there the films were too rough, so it is a spiral growth and a one unit cell step is, say, 11 to 12 angstrom. So you have 10, 12 steps, so the film roughness increases dramatically. So we have to come up with other techniques to make these films. So what we did was with normal pulse laser deposition um, we deposit with normally 1 to 5 hertz um, in that way you can count how many pulses you needed to deposit a single monolayer and if you do this deposition then at a high frequency it is called pulse laser interval deposition and you stabilize a monolayer right within a second and in that way you can stabilize very difficult materials This is the heater with the substrate mounted on it I will open the load lock system and mount the heater on the load stick. I'm pumping down this load lock part to get the pressure closer to the pressure inside the system. In this way we don't have to open the system all the time and we can work much faster and do more deposition during the day. You count the number of pulses you need to make one monolayer, but for some materials this is not possible at the low frequencies and you do this at high frequencies. So at this moment the frequency of the laser is 1 Hz and I will increase it now to 5. 
On the left side, you can see the, the holder of the different targets. There are, is it, is it possible to mount five different targets? So this is a simulation of our pulse laser deposition that we can manage to make a layer by layer deposition. So you see two targets and the laser beam, the laser beam hits the target and you get the plasma. The plasma is depositing material at the surface of the substrate. Now an electric beam is just reflected at the surface of the substrate and if you look to the other side we see the reflections of the electron and we see a diffraction pattern where the bright spot is the primary reflection and if we monitor the intensity of this reflection we can see if we finished one closed layer or not. So in the upper front on the right we see the increase intensity and a decrease with the next, next material, an increase of the intensity and the next material and on the left spot you see a TM image where we just build up the super and barium copper oxide on strontium titanate forming one, two, three iterium barium copper oxide in an artificial way. So one block is one unit cell of iterium barium copper oxide. Now we deposit this one unit cell layer and we just wait to relax to migrate the material at the surface of your substrate and just close one layer. So next, the next pulse tuck, comes with exactly the amount of one unit cell of the material and we wait to relax and form just one closed layer. Also what you see here is an animation of the grow, a non-ideal grow of say ethylene copper oxide on a strontium titanate substrate. You see the energy going down, that means that the layer gets rougher and rougher and when the layer is covered for 50% you are at a minimum and then all the holes are filled up again and the energy comes up. It's increasing again till it's the closed layer and then the next layer forms a decrease and an increase again. So this is a read oscillation. But as you see the maximum is not recovering fully. It means it's an increased roughness of the material. A special new facility has been developed to coat wafers with superconducting materials on both sides. Uniform coating thicknesses are guaranteed by turning the substrate into plasma. The quality of the wafer produced in this way is examined in a dedicated unit, indicating any defects which may exist.